today I've got the garage review for the STB1. Now this tank has changed a lot since they added the pneumatic suspension. I say a lot. It's still derpy as it was, but I, th I think it probably feels... I, I'm, I don't have the personal experience myself of having played this tank before it had the pneumatic suspension. But to me, the gun handling just feels awful. <laughs> and I don't know if it was like that before. But, I don't know. I, en I enjoy fast-firing tanks, but when they don't hit things all the time, I don't know. I struggle to be quite consistent in this thing. And I say struggle, I mean, I, I really struggle to be consistent in this thing. It's, it's feast or famine for me in this. Now, this is a tank suggestion. So... A couple of videos ago, or a couple of weeks ago, I said in a video, if there's any tanks you want me to play, you know, post it down below. And you guys did. You posted quite a few good tanks. You know, tanks that I haven't played for a while, and interesting tanks at that. So, I am going to basically play the games in those tanks that you asked. And as the tank suggestion thing is going to be... I'm going to do garage reviews for those tanks and then show the gameplay. So I'm going to go through the stats. I'm going to go tell you, hopefully show you, tell and hopefully show you what this tank tanks are capable of. And hopefully you'll learn something from it or you'll gain something that you might not have known or you can probably tell me something that I might not know about it. I might miss, you know. So this is what I'm going to do with these tank suggestions. Now I would normally say if someone suggests a tank, I will put. I'll say who basically suggested it, but there was about six or seven of you who all said STB1. So here we are with the STB1. It was a pain to get the games for this, like I say, I wasn't the most consistent in it. But yeah, it's one of the it's one of the better looking tanks in the game. I mean, it looks fabulous. It's one of those tanks where you look at it and go, that is a that is a good looking tank. Look at its face. Anyway, so let's get down to the stats. So for me, I equip rammer, vert stabs, and optics. Now it's got a good view range at 410, so you could equip vents, but I'm always about complete view range saturation, just overdoing the view range completely. Because with 410 view range, with food, with the optics, Brothers in Arms, Situational Awareness, Recon, you're getting that way above 500 meters, which means you're just completely devaluing people's camos. And it just means that you get a lot more spotting a lot easier. Now, obviously, because this tank's DPM, I mean, you've got 7 rounds a minute, 7.5 rounds a minute. The rate of fire on this tank is one of the best in its class. Okay? The rate of fire is insane. It is so good. It's just a shame that it can't... Wait, well, it feels like you can't use it half the time. This is the T95E6's reload, 7.23 rounds a minute, okay? That is a really good reload, and that for this tank is a 8.3 second base reload. With the STB-1, it is 8 seconds base reload. Now, with the 8 seconds base reload, I can get it down to about 6 point, I think 6.4? Reload something like that. 6.4 second reload, which is just incredible. It's incredible. So when you're like face to face brawling someone, which is not something you really want to do in this tank, but if you're right close to people, you can just wreck people so fast. You can just tear through them before they've blinked. So it's got a 7.5 round a minute rate of fire, you know, 8 second base reload, 258 APCR pen. 330 heat pen for 390 alpha. The 53 pen HE rounds at 480 are... They're not the best. They're not very usable, to be honest. I mean, even at tier 10 with the artillery, there's only one or two that you can truly pen with the, the HE rounds. There's not many. They're, they are good for, say, waffles and uh, FV 4005s. But, the, the, yeah, there's not much you can use it for. The thing that kills this tank for me is that 2.3 second re uh, aim time, sorry. 2.3 second aim time paired with that 0.36 accuracy is just horrible. It just feels horrible. Uh, it, it doesn't hit all that often. 
And add to that that you sit there aiming for about two years, is what it feels like, then you don't often hit. Add to that that the hidden dispersion values that you don't see in this game, that if you were on, you know, if you use Tanks GG, say, and you see the PC dispersion values, it's, it's terrible. You turn the turret, you turn the tank, your bl gun bloom is massive. So it takes a lot longer for that aim circle to aim in. Now, they did bring the hydro pneumatic suspension to this tank. Same as they did the T95E2 and the same as it is on the Swediums. It's got 14 degrees of gun depression. I think it's 8 degrees without the pneumatic suspension. But that pneumatic suspension does not affect gun handling or anything like that. All it does is mean that your tank will pivot up and use the suspension to get more gun depression. Now that 14 degrees is great. It, it's really good. But when they brought in the pneumatic suspension as well, they also nerfed it. In a way, it basically nerfed the depression over the sides of the tank. Because before you got 8 degrees over the front and the side. But now you only get 6 degrees over the side because of the way the suspension works. And the way it lifts up. So you, you basically negating what you had. And uh, yeah, it, it's not the best. It can, it can be good, like I say, but mm, it struggles. Also, just the way this, the hydro pneumatic suspension works on this game. It kind of lag. It feels like it lags a little bit and that can be a bit frustrating. And with the derpiness of the gun, yeah. Yeah. So with the concealment, you've got 24% camo, 18 on the move, 1950 hit, um, yeah, 1950 hit points, and yeah, 4.10 view range. The shell velocity is 1478 meters a second on the APCR, which is very, very, very good. And 11.73 on the heat, which again is is, is good velocity for a heat shell. And you've got 750 horsepower, so 20 horsepower per ton at 53 kilometers an hour at top speed. It get, it can shift about. It's not the fastest of mediums. When I'm driving it, I do feel like I'll, I should be slightly quicker like you are on, a say, a Leo 1 or something like that. But it's not the slowest. It, it, it's, it's not the slowest. It's not the fastest. It sort of sits in that medium range category for that. Oh, there, there we go. There's the dispersion for on the move and rotating the turret. The rotating the turret one at 2.12 is not is not very good. If uh, to be fair, I don't actually know. Is so rotating the turret on the T95E6 lock is 1.37. So when you turn the turret on this tank, it doesn't bloom that much. It doesn't affect how much your aim circle changes. But on the STB1 at 2.12. Oh boy, your your bloom on your aim circle is going to be massive, as you'll see. It's huge. And it really struggles in that way. I, d I don't know. It, like I say, the STB-1 is a tank that I really enjoy. I, I, I feel like I would really enjoy it if the gun handling was better. It's just frustrating. It's a very, very frustrating tank to play. And there's not as many situations where you actually feel that powerful in this tank when you go all in on someone and you know that say they've got half health or three quarters health and you know you can take one or two hits off them but you can pen them pretty much every time you will kill them very fast and they won't be able to do much about it but that's just the way it is with this tank now on changes when they well when they changed things on pc okay they changed the pneumatic suspension, so they gave it 14 degrees of gun depression on PC. But they also changed it so that the turret had armour. So instead of the 100 and 195 frontal turret armour that this tank got, they basically made it so that it was even... Because like, this tank cannot poke. This tank... Well, I say that. This tank can poke a ridgeline, but it won't bounce much. You might get the occasional ricochet, just because of the, just because of the way this, you know, this armor is, and it's look how weirdly angled it is. So you can ricochet, but generally you'll get penned through the turret, 
and then you'll lose your gunner or your commander and that's kind of painful at times it can be very very painful but as you see the armor generally that is non-existent 80 millimeters on the upper plate 40 on the upper upper deck is it's not great and when they actually changed everything else on the scb1 as well on pc they basically buffed the rate of fire so it got slightly better dpm than it has now but they changed the ammunition types so it got ap and heat instead of what we've got now and they nerfed the damage so they made it 360 instead of 390 but it had better dpm than this does now and when they did that they made the dispersion they basically nerfed the dispersion from 0.36 what this gets now to 0.37 so they made it slightly derpier. And now you think, ooh, that's not that good. But in reality, they made the aim time from 2.3 to 2 seconds, as well as giving it the, the turret armor at 225, I think it is, that meant that it could bounce things more reliably off its turret. Not, not ridiculously reliable, but it could bounce things a lot easier than this can now. And it meant that it could fire... It could snap shots better. It didn't have to hang about and aim. Two seconds is a lot better. But they also buffed the dispersions when it moved the turret and the tank. So instead of... I don't know what it would relate to for us. But say instead of having that point, that 2.12, it had like 1.5 or something like that. That's, that's the major difference that they did. So you didn't have to... So when you turn the turret, the bloom didn't become massive. But I say, on the whole, it's a it's a very frustrating tank to be honest. It's yeah, it's okay. So I'll see you all in the gameplay very shortly. So this is a quick game bit of gameplay. This one right here, this clip. This isn't the full game. This is legit just how fast this tank can rack up damage. So we're on Sand River, which is probably one of our favourite maps to play and we've come to this middle ridge to get shots at people as they cross and we've got obviously their team has crossed like that chieftain that 430 version 2 we've so we've got nice places to get shots that chieftain fired hesh at us that didn't work for him we only took 200 damage but this this gameplay on this map right here is going to get manic very quickly and it will be a very good show it will be a very very good show of just what this tank can do in a short space of time when put under pressure with this gun so all of this is very very short range and look how many tanks are going to are going to be below us this valor wants to hurt us we put a shot into his tracks unfortunately don't pen luckily ricochet off of our upper plate and we're just going to keep pummeling shots in. Now, there's literally just me, and I think it's a mouse, that's holding up at F4. And they're all very preoccupied with him. So we're going for the tracking shot on the E4. And I say, ricochet another one from over there. Uh, these are very lucky ricochets. This doesn't, don't expect it to do this all the time, because it doesn't. And we're just going to keep pummeling shots in. Like I say, look how quickly this reloads. It's not long after we fired the first one. We're back in action again. We get unlucky with that one. We're into his side, but I think we hit the lower track. And we're just going to keep shooting. We're going to pull more shot into this Conqueror. I should have aimed for his tracks there. But hey-ho. And then we're going to pummel a shot down into this 2790. Now we are firing down at the 2790, so that makes his armour less useful so we can just keep penning it very easily with APCR we don't need the heat and we're gonna just like I say uh, just how quick we've wrapped up 4k damage it's been a minute it's been one minute since this whole showdown with all these enemy tanks in front of us started and we've done 4k damage it's the DPM on this thing is insane and when you're at this close range and people like those guys are all ignoring you you can do so much damage so quickly, you can put so much hurt into them that they don't even know what's happened. So we're going to put a tracking shot into the Conqueror, hold him steady for the mouse. 
And I don't understand why these guys are just completely ignoring us, but it's it's very helpful. We'll track the 140, put a shot into him. And we're just gonna let's say we're just gonna keep poking, put, putting shots in. We unfortunately take a hit from the Valor who pokes all the way around. We bounce on him because we snap the shot in. And he's gonna come back for more. We get lucky with the roll, 411, shutting down, 5.5k. Unfortunately, the 277 snaps a shot into us. Again, that's the turret armor. We were, He only had our turret, but he, bound, uh, but he penned. We can't quite get the shot in, unfortunately, on the 277 as he gets into cover. Now, I make a silly play here. I stay in front of this 277, and then I push up on him. I shouldn't have done this. This was bad, because this gives him the opportunity to do what he's right about to do. Shut me down. What I should have done is gone up the ridge line and then got shots on him from above. But hey ho, we make mistakes. But we got, you know, 5.9k damage in that short, short space of time. And I thought I'd include that in this video because it really does show how good the DPM is and how fast you can trash people. Now, you also saw in that how often you hear the clicking sound for the pneumatic suspension. And the clicking sound is quite loud, quite repetitive, and keeps ac activating all the time in situations like where you're getting to above speed and below speed of what you need to activate the suspension. Because I think it's 20 kilometers an hour. It, so you can activate the pneumatic suspension and get the better gun depression if you're going below 20 kilometers an hour. So as soon as you go over that, it deactivates and goes back to normal. The yeah, uh, you, and then you get the 14 degrees gun depression. As you saw in that Sand River game as well, I did have a little bit of awkward times with the shots when I was pulling out sideways because I only have 6 degrees gun depression in that way rather than what I had in the front. So now we're on Khan and we're in this tank. Um, the, the distances we're going to be fighting at now are a little bit different. We've come to probably the best position on this map. And that's this F3 area. This is the best position on the map. Because you can just do so much from it. There's so many videos you've seen me on when I've been in this tank. Well, not in this tank, but in a tank on this map. And I've got gun depression. I will come here. Because you can get vision out across most... Well, it's, it's a very central position. So you get vision across the 6 line. You get vision across the 1 line. 2, 3, 4... And you also have a good shooting position against all of these guys as well. So we're just going to keep spotting the enemy team and pummeling shots in where we can. So right now we're not spot we've not got much to shoot at in easy positions, and they've all seemed to be looking at me because I think I'm the well. There's four tanks over here. There's two heavies with me and a medium tank. And I am probably one of the only ones that they could have shot. This is an E75, who's three miles. He could be a danger, and we're just going to keep putting shots in. And so far, he is ignoring me, which is a dangerous thing to do. I get detected, so I think, mm, maybe that chisel's finally decided to look at me, but he hasn't. And our guys now are progressing the other side. So I can push up and use this mission a little bit better. And we're going to try and aim up at this he's 257. We put a shot straight through his turret. Because that's a sad thing about the T-57 Heavy. It's, it's not the most well-armoured tank. It's pretty easy to go through his turret. You do get occasional bounces on it but generally the, the turret's not that good so we're going to change up again we're going to get some shots at the C75 put one through his lower plate he fires at us on the move and misses and we're going to wait for that suspension to kick in and we bounce now people might get a bit annoyed thinking I've got 258 pen you know the E75 lower plate is good but it's not that good to bounce it now the way he, it, that was the way he was angled and that was the APCR problem. If that was AP or heat, I might have gone through that. But, because it's APCR and it only gets two degrees of normalization, which means it bounces, it, it takes a lot less angling for it to bounce than, uh, say, an AP or a heat round. The way he was angled meant it just ricocheted. It's easier to ricochet with APCR off of ang angled shot. Well, shots at angled tanks than it is with any other round. Which is why, say, firing heat rounds at uh, Swedish TDs works. But where APCR will bounce a lot, an AP. And that's why 
you can pen, say, the STRV1030, for example, you need 122 caliber plus to pen it reliably with any shell. But if you switch to heat, you will more than likely just go through it anyway. If you've got a heat round, it will go through because of the normalization. Well, it doesn't suffer from normalization. So right now we've got a good position to shoot these guys at distance. That one hits the floor fully aimed at the lower plate of the Conqueror, which is unfortunate. This Chieftain puts in a shot. And we're going to see if we can put another one in. We, take, we eat two shots for not doing any damage there, which is not productive. It's not good. So we're not going to sit there and fight those two guys anymore. We're going to go and move up and try and flank round. And there's this T-57 Heavy that we want to try and shut down. We do. We shut him down nicely. And um, again, we're just going to pull back behind the ridgeline because these guys still have shots at us. This Chieftain is trying to side scrape, which is not advisable because the tank can't really do it. It's only got 40 millimeters of side armor, which is fine against a 105, but it's not. It, it basically means that if you overangle even slightly, I will butter the tank very, very nicely, very easily. So we snap the shot a little bit against that Count Panzer, but get pretty unlucky with where it goes. And right now, you're seeing the problem a little bit with the suspension there. I slipped down that ridge line and I went a little bit too quick, so the suspension reset. But then I was also fully sideways on, so I couldn't quite depress the gun to hit the guy's side when I hit his turret. And that was a little bit of a problem. So we're going to try and get back up on top of this ridge line to get safe. Because we got lucky and bounced his, I think it was his heat shell off my turret. And that's what I'm talking about with the angles and the lucky ricochets you can pull off. And he's deciding to come in now. He's moved up. I think he's thinking I'm still in the same place. And... I probably shouldn't go back to the same place, but uh, I am, and I'm going to have a bit of soapy rock issues and roll about. He pops in to shoot me, I pop one in, he misses, thank you, we go round him, pop a shot in, he's getting wrecked really quickly, I bounce one of my teammate shells, and we're going to shut him down. And like we've got 5.9k damage, 1,300 assistance, so that's... What, 7.2k combined? That's a nice game for the STB1. High caliber, ace tanker. And it, yeah, it shows what this tank's a bit more like at range. 29 shots fired, 24 hits, 16 pens. The 24 to 16, again, was showing some points where the gun doesn't. It hits, it goes in the general vicinity of the tank, but say you're aiming at a lower plate. And it hits the upper plate. But the general gun accuracy there, 29 to 24, is not what this gun is like at all. This game here is probably a better representation. So, Ron Prokhorovka. And we're in a cross-play platoon. So in this platoon, there's me, Crow, Karma, and, Sw and Swindle. And Ron Proc, which is always a good map, and obviously since they did 5.0, this map looks incredible. It looks absolutely fantastic, and I, I, to be honest, I love it. I, I can't rave enough about how good these maps look. The, the maps that they changed look fantastic, so, uh, and it's it's part of me that can forgive the WWE stuff for more stuff like this. I can. I don't care about the garage. I mean, as much as the garage is hideous and the clapping sound is annoying and the WWE tanks intro musics are, some of them are incredibly loud like Becky Lynch and blow your ears off. If we get more maps like this and they look stunning I'll, I'll accept it and I'll take it. So we've run the mid ridge we're kind of hoping we don't get pooped on by artillery. And we're going to try to put shots in at people. Now this is where the STB-1 will struggle a little bit because it can't snap shots. And the ridge lines on Prokhorovka lend themselves more to tanks that can pop up, possibly ricochet something, but at the same time just snap a shot in and pull back. And It's not what this tank wants to do. So what we're going to keep doing over and over again on this map is rotating. We're going to keep rotating between the positions on this ridgeline. 
So we've come back to the bowl here to see if we can get shots and spot anything that's down the 1-2 line. We're not really spotting anything. This IS-4 gets smashed from somewhere. And we're going to try and put a shot into the MX-13-105. We miss him. And then artillery, unfortunately, comes and says hello. Shaves off 900 health from the back of the map. Thank you very much, mate. It's very kind of you. And we're not going to take his shenanigans anymore. We're just going to go and move up somewhere else. And this 13105 is YOLOing Swindle and Crow. He gets tracked, and we're just going to shut him down. Why he did that, I don't know. He just threw his tank away so easily. And... Um, it's just that was a silly thing to do for him, really. So we're going to try and pop a shot this conk over distance. We miss. This is not, again, not really something you want to be doing. Because he is definitely looking this way and shooting those guys. And he will hit me more than I'll hit him. As you see, I've had two shots fully miss. And that I had his full lower plate from where he was sat. So I could hit that. But 0.36 accuracy was saying no. So again, I'm careful because if I get spotted... That, like I said, that S Conqueror is looking this way. So he can shoot us. So that's why I've sort of moved a bit further over here. To get myself out of render range. And then we spot a tank. And it's this T95E6. We pop a shot into the side of his turret. And he pulls back. And we're just looking for the next shot. That's what it is at the minute. There's this E4 in front of us which is dangerous. He's trying to shoot, I think, Swindle and Crow. We try and pop a shot into this IS-4. We bounce off the side of his turret. And he's just poking enough luck that we can get shots into the cupola and the side of his turret. But, I mean, it wasn't fully aimed, but it was nearly aimed. And most other tanks might have probably hit that shell, but we hit the dirt. So he gets a bit lucky there. Now this bat chat is doing bat chat things and YOLOing in. So we're going to try and... Put some shots into him, but we missed that one. Again, gun handling. It was a very slim shot. I, I'll give it that one. That was a very, very slim shot. It's probably very difficult for the tank in general. We're trying to push over to put some more shots into that T95E6. But what I just did there was a tad bit aggressive. We're not. We're still not quite sure what is sat at the back down the two line. Because there is usually always something sat back there. And... It will hurt us, and it would have hurt us. And that what that over-aggressive push that I just did wasn't a good thing to do. So again, most of the side of the E4's turret and his cupola, mostly aimed, skyrockets over him. And we are just, just struggling to find a shot somewhere to get damage. We're at 1,200 damage now. We're, um, we're five minutes into the game. And we've only done 1,200 damage, 700 assistance. It's, it's going a bit slow. Unlike the first clip in this video, which was super fast. Now, again, not fully aimed, but most of the way. And it, it still doesn't hit the full broadside of that T95E6. And like I said, you are getting the full feel of this gun right now. So we managed to get a shot into the E4. Which is quite nice. We finally hit him. It's not like we've fired four shots at him already. And we're now, again, looking to see what else we can shoot. And I'm just telling... Because I think Crow and Swindle at the minute are very focused on the guys that were trying to shoot them from the hill, like the Super Conqueror. I'm trying to say the E4 is pushing to E6. He's probably going to pop up and try and get shots at you guys. And unfortunately, Swindle got shut down by the artillery. So, it's just Crow over there now. And I've made the decision now that I've got to take the bowl. Now, since 5.0, the bowl on Prokhorovka is not as good as it used to be. Because the bushes down the back hide tanks a lot better than they used to, which is good. That's very, very good. But it means you're not as good at spotting from this position. But, as I say that... We spotted that T95E6. That's the view range saturation as well. He was sat in a silly place. How good the view range I've got on this tank is going. We managed to spot him up and we got all of his health as well as shutting him down with a nice shot. After the first shot we took it and missed. So we ended up getting 2.4k assistance. Well, an extra, what, 2k assistance or something like that anyway. 
just from poking that position of the bowl, which is why it's still quite good. And we're going to try and shut down this ice for now. We get lucky that he bounced, to be honest. I don't know how he bounced, but he did. And this bat chat's yolo in, so we're just going to shut him down. We'll save Karma there. Thank you. And we're going to try and pop some shots at the C4. He is looking at us right now, which is it's dangerous. He's going to pedal us every time. His gun's big and scary. But Karma manages to shut him down. So... There's not... Well, as you can see, there's four... Five tanks spotted on the opposite side of the map. There's only five tank, Actual tanks, not artillery. Actual tanks left in the game. So I can progress now perfectly safely across this side of the map. All the rest of them are over there. We've amassed 2.8k damage, 4 kills, 2.4k assistance. And they are starting to push through now on our side. So I, I'm trying to get shots at these guys. And, sorry, I was just trying to work out what happened. The artillery fired an AP round at me. That That's a scary thing. <laughs> he fired an AP round at me and missed, fortunately. He was sat right at the back. And we kind of get lucky that we don't die there. So, now we've got a nice shot over this train tracks. We pop a shot at this Super Conqueror pretty much nearly fully aimed. It tracks him only. He hits us, damages the gun. Again, lucky that he doesn't pen. But we miss him anyway. This AMXM4 is charging. He looks like he is going to come straight over the ridge line. Although, actually, he falls back a little bit. And we're being careful because he could have the small gun. Or he could have the big gun. If he has a small gun, he'll hit us for 400. If he has the big gun, which it looks like the big gun, he would have hit us for 560. And he could roll high enough to kill us. But luckily, we get a nice roll. Which, it was a nice high roll when we shut him down. We get our sixth kill of the game and rock 3.6k damage. That's the point of the AMXM 454 that's a bit sad. Because the lower plate on the AMXM 451, the tier 9, as I've said in previous games, isn't that much of a weak spot. It's more likely to bounce than the tier 10 version. As the tier 10 version's lower plate is not that great. And especially since I've only got heat left, I was always going to go through that shell. And that's where, the, that's where the pneumatic suspension did help me. Because... I managed to depress the gun down so I could shoot it. Now, most other tanks might not have had the gun depression. I've had to probably overexpose myself a little bit more. But, yeah, that's that's where the suspension can come in handy. So we ended up not managing to kill that IS-7. We didn't manage to roll high enough, but we got lucky with some of the other rolls. We ended up doing 4.8k damage, 3k spotting, so that's... 8k? Yeah, about 8k combined. 1800 base XP, that's more like the gun handling, 35 shots fired, 19 hits, 14 pens, and that's, like I said, that's more like what the gun, the, the, the gun stats affect the tank, that's where the derpy gun handling comes into play, it's, it's horrible, it's an awkward tank at times, DPM is insane, you can just wreck people so good, can be enjoyable, but it's very frustrating. So, I hope you enjoy, all enjoyed this review of the SW1. This is what I'm going to do with tank suggestions. And I hope you all enjoyed it. I'll see you next time.